What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. All you new subscribers, I'm Barbas. Today is a beautiful day out here. It's about 60 degrees. And today we're going to be installing the intercooler, which is sitting right here with all the piping. Um, before we get started, I want to show you guys something that I did to the Civic. All right, so I went ahead and I laid some paint down on this guy. I don't know if you guys remember from my other videos that it was pretty rusty looking. I went ahead and I cleaned it off with a little wire brush and then I laid some paint on here. So it's looking very nice, very clean. Um, this guy too, I did the same thing right here. So my bumper is on here, but it's not really on there because it's not really mounted down. It's just hanging on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it off real quick and we'll get started on this. All right. So this intercooler is a little bit bigger than what I am used to putting on my Civics. I usually buy the one that's like up to here, from here on down. The small little one, you guys probably know the one I'm talking about. Um, this one is way bigger than what I'm, I'm used to. And I'm not sure if we're gonna have to remove this right here. Either cut it from the back a little bit and try to put this on there or trim it completely off or just take it off it is pretty rusted so even if I got into a car accident without this thing on here I don't think this would really do much because like I said this is pretty rusted um, this side is the same over here so let's go ahead and I'm gonna get the jack and try to jack this guy up a little bit and kind of determine where my piping is going to be and everything like mock it up all right we're going to attempt to go somewhere around here So I think right there would actually be a pretty good spot. Um, I got these holes that I can use, put something on here to hold, to hold these, to hold the intercooler down. I could probably go even higher if I wanted to. Maybe all the way to the top. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start running the piping so I can have an idea of where the piping is going to land and then I could figure out the height of the intercooler. I was also thinking removing this, like cutting it right here or just taking it off completely like I told you guys and then drilling some holes on my bumper a few holes right here in front to let air through but I'm not sure yet um, let's go ahead and run some piping all right so I laid some piping down um, I have this one left over right here and this is kind of what we have right now we got this pipe that's gonna come out of here like this then it's gonna swirl it's gonna swirl down and then down here I have this pipe that's gonna go out of the inner cooler and swirl up into this pipe right there we're gonna have to trim all this to make it fit um, on this side 
this side, we have this pipe that's going to go like this. And then I have this pipe that's going to come out of the turbo back here, right there. And it's going to swirl down like that. And it's going to connect to the other pipe, to this pipe right here. So I'm definitely going to have to cut some stuff up on those pipes. Um, the intercooler, I'm thinking of maybe raising the intercooler all the way to the top and bolting it through the top right here, right onto here, right onto these threads. And I am gonna measure right now, make sure that this is pretty centered and maybe I'll take this thing off. I went ahead and I pulled the intercooler out and I tried removing this and there was one bolt on each side right here one on that side one on this side and then this little bracket has two bolts on it and that one only had one bolt so I took that one off the bracket came off and this thing is still on here. I don't know if it's tacked on there, if it's welded, maybe in the back over there. I've never had to remove one of these before, but you guys can see that if I push down on it, the whole thing is moving. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take the saw saw and cut this off right here and right here. So of course the battery decides to die off on this. So I'm gonna be switching to the grinder. Alright, so this whole chunk is completely off now. Um, I'm thinking of just taking these off, grinding them off completely because this isn't going to do much. Look at this. You guys see this? How easily I'm bending it and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and shave those off. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it looks like maybe this car was in a small accident before. This side is a little bit pushed that way just a little bit so I'm not sure if that if the radiator core support was pushed in before and nobody fixed it or if they attempted to fix it I'm not sure but now that this bar is off I could see it right here it's almost like it needs to come this way a little bit So I started cutting it up here and then I hit it with the hammer and as soon as I started hitting it with the hammer 
this whole piece started coming off from over here from where the spot welds are over here so i think i'm just gonna go ahead and remove it from back here and take the whole thing off There's a little bit of rust back here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, after I get this thing off, clean this whole thing off with the grinder and see if I can lay some primer down right here. All right, so this whole thing's off. I went ahead and I laid some paint and we are gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I went ahead and I got it mocked up again, one more time. Um, I did have to trim a little bit underneath right here and right here it was all underneath it was like a little arm that would come across like this like at an angle on both sides it was like support for this top part of this so i went ahead and i cut it i just trimmed it i didn't cut it out all the way just trimmed it enough for for this to work and this hole that's up here lined up perfectly with this so i could just drop a bolt right there but this side did not um, it is perfectly centered right now, which is a good thing. So I'm just going to have to drill a little hole right here. And then I'll be able to drop my bolts in there. I found some bolts that are 12 millimeter that fit in here perfectly on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this so I could go ahead and drill the hole. It's going to be like right there. All right, now we're gonna try to see if we can put a support underneath to the bolts that go underneath. All right, you guys, there was a change of plan. Um, I went ahead and I removed these bolts cause I tried to mock up the front bumper just to make sure that it was gonna fit and the front bumper did not fit, it would not clear. So what I ended up doing is I needed to drop it this far. So what I ended up doing is I got these long bolts on each side that threaded into this. So what I did was I took one of these that would fit on here on these threads and I ran it up halfway on both sides. Then I put my intercooler, I put this guy in and then once this one was nice and tight, I went ahead and I ran that nut that was in the middle I ran it up to tie the whole thing up here underneath. So let me see if I can show you under here. If you can see that right here. And that gave me the clearance that I needed. 
Um, I'm definitely gonna have to put something underneath because look, it's kind of wobbly. But before I finish tightening the bottom part, I think I'm gonna run all my piping. And then I'll go ahead, try the bumper on, and if it clears, everything looks good, I'll go ahead and make a support for the bottom. All right, so I have this pipe right here. Now that I'm mocking up all the piping, I have this pipe right here. But it hits right here on this mount. So I might have to take that off. I tried flipping it this way. And this way I do get a little bit more clearance because this pipe is longer right here. Um, but I'm still having some kind of a clearance issue down there. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to remove this mount that's down here in the front of the transmission so I can get this piping on here. So I got all the plumbing completely done. You can see this side, everything's hooked up, swirls around, goes in here. This side goes around, swirls this way and comes up right to the back side of the turbo. So I think now I'm ready to start throwing um, some of these hose clamps on there, start tightening everything down. And the bumper does clear. I'm gonna have to cut a little bit from the back side, but besides that, the bumper does clear. So I took a little break and I got some food. And right now I'm about to put the clamps on. And the sun is starting to go down already. You can see it's not as sunny out there as it was a little bit ago. So, oh yeah, I did clean up all the tools that were laying around and everything. I swept up. And I'm gonna go ahead and put all these clamps on. Hose clamps are on. Um, I did run into a problem where I'm missing two of the three inch hose clamps. They go on each side and I am missing one two and a half inch uh, hose clamp also. So I might have to go to AutoZone maybe tomorrow. Right now we are going to go ahead and install the blow up valve. We got the gasket, the bolts, of course, the blow up valve. And we are gonna go ahead and use, let me see. Mm, it's not this one, it's a different one. I don't see it up here. I found it, it's right here. We're gonna go ahead and use this to make the gasket nice and tacky. Stuff, it's almost like hairspray it makes everything tacky and it helps it seal a little bit better So the blow up valve is in, but I feel like it's not on there correctly. Um, as you can see, I tightened both of the bolts really good and there's still a little bit of play where I could move it back and forth. I feel like there should have been an O-ring that goes on this pipe right here. An O-ring that goes on this pipe, but sandwiched right here right in between here some kind of an o-ring 
to seal it off completely so it doesn't move at all but if somebody knows about this let me know in the comments below but from my understanding this just goes on there bolted like that with that gasket so I really don't know why it's moving but you know what I've never had a design like this the other designs that I've had have been like the ones that you twist on or the other ones that uh that you use this kind of a blow -up valve this kind of adapter and then the blow -up valve goes on top but I could be wrong maybe it's supposed to be like this but if anybody knows let me know down below I would appreciate it I'm gonna stop the video here for now because I'm not sure what's going on with this thing and also because I need those hose clamps and I will continue this as soon as I find out about that and I managed to go to the store and pick up some hose clamps so today is the next day thank you guys for the feedback on telling me what's going on with this blow up valve I did research and it seems that everybody agrees with you guys that if it's loose then there's gonna be a leak all right so there was somebody right there walking around right now I walked over there but they're already gone but either way um, let me show you guys this thing I, I did take it off I took it completely off and let me show you right here so this piece it doesn't really have a spot where you could put like an o-ring or anything so what it's doing is it's coming this way but then it's got play right here where you could just spin it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some RTV on the inside I'm gonna let it dry for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna start to squeeze it and start tightening this not all the way just tighten it up a little bit and then I'm gonna wait another like 15 minutes and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it all the way down that way I can make a nice little seal for it and that should take care of that um, this stuff that I had sprayed on this gasket like I said it works it works really good when I took off those bolts this thing was completely stuck on there like that like really good so make sure if you guys uh, are doing paper gaskets like this if you guys are uh, adding paper gaskets to anything make sure you guys pick up one of those cans because it works really good it's still kind of tacky so I put a small little bead of the black RTV what I did was I spun this guy in a circle and I just held the RTV right there and I managed to get it on the whole thing all the way around so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy this way a little bit not too much because I don't want to squeeze this stuff out before it makes the gasket so just about right there I'm gonna let it sit there for about 10 minutes and then I'll go ahead and hook up the blow valve and I'll wait another 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll go ahead and tighten it all down I went ahead and I put another bead on the inside of this side all the way around just to ensure that I don't have any leaks later on and I'm just going to go ahead and let this cure a few hours and I'm not going to plug it in or anything right now I guess I'll do that in a whole different video um, I did go ahead and get some hose clamps at Harbor Freight I got this kit for six bucks Came with a bunch of hose clamps and now everything's secured the only thing that's left is I want to put something down here it's like some kind of a support to hold the intercooler from moving at all I don't know if you guys can see this but I could shake it a little bit but I want to build something underneath I'm not sure what yet all right, both of the headlights are back in and I think I might have to trim the inside of the bumper to make it fit. But besides that, 
this video is completely done. We've accomplished our goal. This mission is over and we're ready to start on something else. I'm gonna get this video uploaded as soon as possible. And remember guys, stay safe out there, wash your hands. Catch you guys on the next video. Till then, peace out, later. Like button. Make sure they hit that subscribe button. Make sure they hit that like button.